Do you want to make perfect recovery from your TMJ disorder? Here are seven exercises to make you achieve that. Hello Jokers, thanks for watching Jokers Physiotherapy. Uh, today I would like to uh, introduce seven exercises to make your uh, TMJ disorder perfect. Per uh, make a perfect recovery from your TMJ, TMJ disorder. So, uh, let's get started. First one, I would like to go in order that I do in the clinic. Now, with the jaw problem, in many cases, there is a component from the neck and shoulder posture. So, I'd like to start with checking your hump, which is at the base of your neck here. Okay, so we should, we should have minimal hump. There should be a little, but when you're looking straight ahead at your eye height, uh, when you're looking straight ahead, the hump should be minimum. If you place index, ring finger, uh, middle finger and ring finger, and if you place the middle finger on the most uh, step, yeah? And then top and bottom, you have index and ring finger. You can feel a little step. Now that should be minimum. Now to get rid of that, or to reduce the hump, you wanna try and bring your shoulders back and chin back. Now when you bring your chin back, make sure you're not doing this, you're doing that, looking straight ahead, and shoulder blades back, and chin back. Now this is an exaggerated correction, so after 15 seconds, you wanna let it go. But you wanna be doing this of your waking hours from the morning through to you go off to bed every half hour for the first week, and then as your symptom improve, you can let it uh, be you know, a couple of times a day. So, second one. You want to do some reverse child pose. Now what's, uh, I call it reverse child pose, but in yoga there is a child pose. So, that is rounding your shoulders, uh, preferably sitting on the floor on your heels, and, uh, and then, what you do is you put your... So, reverse child pose can be done when you're at the desk and this is how I, uh, how I do it. So you sit on the edge of the chair, probably shallowly, and put your elbows on the edge of the table. You push your bum back and go as far back so that the top of the head can just slide through the edge of the table. Make sure you're elbows are on the edge and you try and dip your chest down and then really push it down and make sure it's not hurting your shoulders but preferably you want to hold it for a short time of five seconds uh, and you do it more often and by doing it often you're going to gain some flexibility through the upper back thoracic spine to extend if it's done on the floor if the reverse child pose is done on the floor, this here's how you do it. So you sit on the you sit on the floor uh, with your knees bent. So you're sitting on your heels. Uh, same thing with the rest of your arms on the edge of the of the bed or chair um, or coffee table. Make sure you push your uh, buttocks back. So the tip top of the head can just slide out through the edge of the table and then dip. When you do this, make sure your head doesn't tilt like this because that will cause more harm. So make sure when, you're, when you've tilted, you've got your head in a straight position, therefore there's no harm. Always, always no harm. Okay. And the third one is to get the arms behind the body line. So that is to activate your trapezius muscle. And I do this on the wall. So we can keep the vertical motion happening. So your body's not touching the wall. Your elbows, forearm, back of the hand touching the wall. Now once you do this, the head kind of tends to thrust forward, so make sure you pull your head back. But the back of the head, uh, buttocks or upper back or anywhere else not touching, the only bits that are touching are the elbow, forearm, back of the hand. 
From here, you go up, down, two, three, four, five. Who would have thought the arms were this heavy? Six, seven, eight, nine. We go up to 20. Halfway 10. 11, 12. Make sure you're looking straight ahead. 15, five to go. 16, oh, it's starting to burn. 17, make sure you keep pushing the elbow, forearm, back of the hand, especially elbows, into the wall. I think this is 20. Great. And when you do this, if you push your elbows back, it tends to curve your lower back. So make sure you get your buttock muscles on, tummy muscles on at the same time to keep your back, up lower back straight. So the only bits that are activated are your upper back, especially between your shoulder blades, and that'll make the muscles stronger. So then, oh, then what happens is, you got good shoulder blade positions, that'll mean you have a good head position, now, when you have a good head position, that's when the jaw functions at best. So, that's why the neck, shoulder, the posture is so important for jaw, uh, perfect recovery for your TMJ uh, disorder. Okay, so next, I'll continue on. So, from here, the, the next uh, four exercises are for your jaw uh, itself. Let's get started. Do you want to make perfect recovery from your TMJ disorder? Here are seven exercises to achieve that. So from here, uh, we borrow some great ideas from the Roccoberto's six exercises uh, for, the for the TMJ recovery. Our first one is to get your tongue, tip of the tongue on the roof of your mouth, just just behind the front teeth coming down, there's a, there are, there's a surface called the alveolar ridge where it is quite rough uh, to the touch, as in the tongue touching. And try and practice having the tip of the tongue on the roof of your mouth. Keep the tongue on the roof of your mouth and keep your teeth apart but lips closed, which makes your nose breather. Have you been breathing through your nose? That's what we want. But if your tongue normally stays down during the day, that means you're breathing through your mouth, most likely. Or if you're sleeping uh, and you wake up with your mouth very dry, most probably you're a snorer uh, or sleep apnea, having a sleep apnea and the tongue stays down. We want to train the tongue uh, to stay up. Once you train your tongue to stay up, you do what we call Oxford stretch, where you keep the tongue on the roof of your mouth, open wide, while you've got the tip of the tongue on the roof of your mouth, hold it for five seconds. You go. And close. And go again. And close. Keep going. And close. Keep going. And close. Make sure you do this in a good posture. As we talked about, humpless posture. No hump. You do this continuous 60 seconds so you get to do about 10 to 12 repetitions in that one minute you move on to the third one where you place your t your th thumb on the base bottom of your chin and index and ring uh, middle finger on the front part of the chin on either side and you resist opening so your mouth is trying to open thumbs trying to push up and you make them
as an, a net effect is the jaw doesn't move. Six seconds. Okay. And this time the fingers resist pushing down. So from an open position, trying to close. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And you switch again. Opening, resisting with the thumb. Two, three, four, five, six. You go one. You're, I'm trying to close now. Two, three, four, five, six. You can also. Uh, Resist going sideways. So let's go to the right. So I'm resisting, pushing that way. One, two, three, four, five, six. To the left. So I'm pushing back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, again opening. One, two, three, four, five, six. Closing on two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you're in good posture throughout, no harm. And sideways to the right, two, three, four, five, six. And to the left, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you do this uh, one round six times, as the Rakabato suggests. So, here are your seven exercises to make your TMJ disorder perfect recovery. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, information and exercises and please play it around so that you actually can go through and ensure you uh, do enough exercises, enough dosage to uh, have meaningful recovery. So thank you for participating and I look forward to another episode of Joker's Physiotherapy. Cheers!